The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. After nine years of this NDP Liberal government, it is clear the Prime Minister is not worth the cost of fuel. Most Canadian families will struggle just to be able to afford their yearly summer road trip. That's because his carbon tax has helped push the cost of fuel up to record highs. Now, Conservatives have called for a common sense plan to axe the carbon tax and all federal taxes from fuel from now until Labor Day. That would save about 35 cents a litre. Will the government adopt our common sense plan so Canadians can afford their summer road trip? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I am so glad that the Conservatives are raising questions about the cost of living and the lives of Canadians, because it gives me an opportunity to point out that inflation in April was 2.7 per cent. That is the fourth month in a row that inflation has been within the Bank of Canada's target range. And for 15 months now, Mr. Speaker, Wage increases have been outpacing inflation. Here, here. That helps Canadians. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. That's the Liberal message, that Canadians have never <laughs> had it so good. The carbon tax is failing, except at driving up the cost mm-hmm. of everything. That it is it actually the government is succeeding very, very well at driving up the cost of groceries, home heating, and of course, fuel. The carbon tax is sending millions of Canadians to the food bank for the first time and it's pushing the cost of simple things like driving to your favorite family vacation spot out of the reach of hard-working Canadians. While the Prime Minister gets to stick Canadian taxpayers with the bill for his exotic vacations, Canadians are struggling just to scrape enough to take their family on a trip. Why won't they adopt our plan and take the tax off of fuel for the summer? Ain't that the truth, man. Let me know down in the comments. Minister for natural... If you guys would like to see cheaper gas. Mr. Speaker, I would encourage my honourable friend to actually read the work that was done by 300 economists across this country which says unequivocally that 8 out of 10 Canadian families get more money back in the rebate than they actually pay in the price on pollution. That is addressing affordability and in fact Premier Smith herself said she got more money back for her family than she paid. If he really is concerned about affordability though I would encourage him to go to talk to his friend Premier Smith who just increased the price, the gas price by 13 cents and did so with no rebate and no accounting for affordability. The Honourable... The Honourable Member from Cumberland, Colchester. After nine years of this NDP Liberal coalition, Canadians are suffering with crime, chaos, drugs and disorder. The Minister talks about evidence. What about the evidence from the BC Nurses Union and their outcry to ban weapons and hard drugs inside of hospitals? What more science could there be than that, Speaker? On this side of the House, Conservatives announced our plan for tough penalties for weapons in hospitals and to not allow the Minister to decriminalize or even legalize hard drugs. Why do we have to ask again, will the Prime Minister make it illegal to smoke crack and meth in a hospital next to a baby? The Honourable Minister for Mental Health and Addictions. Mr. Speaker, I find it disappointing that the member across actually did not join the recent visit by the Health Committee to BC to speak to experts on the ground. Actual member of the committee, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we follow science, we follow medical experts, we follow best evidence-based practices in order to save lives. The war on drugs didn't work then, it will not work now. We need compassion, evidence and science to guide us through this. Sudbury. The Honourable Member for Sudbury. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives voted against our Medicare legislation, which describes our government's plan to provide Canadians with free medication. This bill represents an important step forward to ensure that Canadians all have access to free reproductive choices and that no one will have to ration insulin anymore. Can the Minister of Health tell us about the positive effects of this bill for Canadians? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the member for her important work on this issue. We share her objective of ensuring that everyone in the country will be able to access the medication they need. That is absolutely essential. I have a simple question 
for almost all of the members of the Conservative Party who are against this legislation. Why are these members against access to contraceptives? I can only think that these members are against women's rights generally. From Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Island and Rideau Lakes. Last week we learned that three contractors involved in this Prime Minister's $60 million arrive scam alone were awarded $1 billion. After nine years we know that this Prime Minister isn't worth that cost. But let's also talk about the corruption. One of those contractors who received $20 million in IT contracts but did no IT work had their doors kicked in by the RCMP. But what we also learned is that they were whining and dining senior officials from this very government. So uh, we know that it cost $60 million. How many boozy dinners were involved in this $60 million scandal? Yeah, yeah he's been really good at putting them under fire for this, uh, this big scandal. My honourable friend knows very well that there are internal investigations taking place with respect to this matter. A number of people were properly called before parliamentary committees and came to testify. And of course, he also knows that the RCMP are looking into this matter. He made reference to that in an overly dramatic moment as well. So, Mr. Speaker, he should have the decency to let the police do their work. We've said from the beginning, anybody who misused taxpayers' money will be held to account. Absolutely. And I have confidence that the RCMP will do their work. Absolutely. The Honourable the honorable Member from St. Albert, Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, the ad hoc committee concluded that the Prime Minister went to unprecedented lengths to hide the Winnipeg lab documents from Parliament to protect his government from political embarrassment. In other words, a cover-up. And the cover-up continues. Last week, Liberal and NDP MPs voted to shut down a parliamentary committee to get to the bottom of the cover-up. A cover-up of a cover-up by of a the cover cover-up up. coalition. A simple question, what are they hiding? Uh, uh, no the Honourable Minister of Health. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And of course, the Honourable Member across would be aware that his party was against any of the mechanisms that actually brought these documents to light. It was this government, in fact, I was the House Leader at the time, that made sure that we had an ad hoc process to make sure that there was a way to properly vet secure documents. And that's why these documents in full, unredacted, are available for everybody to see. Now, the Conservatives refuse to participate in that, and they continue to search for some way to pretend those documents aren't available. But to any, any Canadian, not just any parliamentarian who wants to see those documents, they are available in their entirety. The, the, 